Looking for a little bit more bulk with the citrus berry. She'll probably figure out after this first game, but for now, starting again with some of those bulkier, heavy hitting Pokemon. Rillaboom alongside of the Booster Energy Raging Bolt versus the Kyogre and the Tornadus. A the lead from the early regulation classic. G days from Henry. It's a real classic lead here from Henry. Get the Tornadus, get the Kyogre out on the field, able to set up Tailwind and then fire off a Water Spout. However, it is the Raging Bolt, the past Paradox Pokemon whose Thunderclap ability was uh, really strong at shutting down Tornadus and Urshifu. Yep. It's also really strong at shutting down Kyogre and Tornadus. And that's why Kyogre and Tornadus took a break from Regulation G. There was just too many Assault Vest Raging Bolt in the field. Mm -hmm. Whether or not this Calm Mind Booster Energy variant changes things for the matchup, we'll have to see as Henry locks in a Ghost-type Terrastalization on that Kyogre trying to avoid a Fake Out Flinch. Trying to avoid a Fake Out Flinch and super effective damage from the Thunderclap for a Thunderbolt coming out from the Raging Bolt. Uh, just the Thunderclap there. So there is a taunt coming out from the Tornadus. The fake out will not connect. That is a water spout into the Rillaboom and the Raging Bolt. The Tornadus actually able to make sure that this uh, Raging Bolt was unable to do anything for, with that Thunderclap and the Wood Hammer. Not a one hit KO thanks to the Terrastalization. The Ghost Terra has flipped this matchup on its head, and that's big damage out onto Eduardo's Pokemon. Typically, when you're running a Pokemon like Kyogre, you want to focus in on those water spouts, and you want to have as much damage from those water spouts as possible. But Henry's Kyogre is in a very unique position where he doesn't necessarily have to switch it out this turn. Ice Beam is going to deal super effective damage to the opposing Rillaboom and to the opposing Raging Bolt. And if you can assume that you have enough health left later on in the game to come back, Maybe once Thunderclap is no longer a threat or a Grassy Glide from that Rillaboom, you can just get those KOs pretty easily. Yeah, well, what's not getting a KO is that Grassy Glide on the Rillaboom on the switch in. Dragon Pulse, though, oh. from Raging Bolt kills a lot of damage to that Overquill. We uh, saw Overquill earlier on in the day, and it did not take those uh, Volt Switches from Maridon very well, and it did not take that Dragon Pulse very well on the switch in either. It is now out on the field, but double priority options on Eduardo's side. Either Grassy Glide and especially the Thunderclap will pick up that KO, so Overquill has to protect. It has to protect, and Henry's own Rillaboom needs to find a way to remove the priority threats from the field. We don't see Thunderclap go for the Overquill, so that's good information for him in this next turn. And U-Turn is also enough to pick up the KO on Eduardo's own Rillaboom. So now it is just that Thunderclap that threatens the Overquill in particular, and you can just make a simple switch here, I think, to keep the Overquill safe for later. The rain turns are starting to wind down, though, so you have to be very careful about how you position the Tornadus in particular. You have to be really careful about your Tornadus's positioning and your Kyogre in the back. The, the problem with the U-turn is you do have to now switch something in to tank this Dragon Pulse. Kyogre can't come out or else it would have been knocked out, so Tornadus will be the choice, as Eduardo is now forced to show another Pokemon, while Henry has already shown all four of his. There it is. Our lone Calyrex Shadow Rider in top cut now out on the field. Eduardo has done a fantastic job of whittling down the health on Henry's side of the field so that I think almost all four of his Pokemon are within range mm -hmm. of a priority attack, knocking it out. And that Raging Bolt is still very, very healthy on the field as well. Overquill should be faster than it if it doesn't go for a Thunderclap. I just don't see any way that Henry has a way to pressure the Raging Bolt from not going for that option. Yeah, the, uh, the only way is to maybe hope that Raging Bolt runs out of Thunderclap Thunderclaps, but it has not yet. That's Overquill going down to a Thunderclap. Overquill switched in, took a Dragon Pulse, and then took a Thunderclap and did not do much of anything else this game. There is the Astral Barrage. Will also pick up the KO onto Tornadus and get a Grim Nade boost onto the Calyrex on Eduardo's side. So Henry now has positioned a world where Kyogre is under Tailwind and the Rillaboom gets to come back out. So that means there will be a turn of fake out pressure uh, for the Rillaboom to be able to keep that, uh, that Raging Bolt at bay. But either of these Pokemon could just protect this turn. They could. 
I think Eduardo has to protect this turn because otherwise you're giving your opponent too much of an opening. By protecting this turn, not only do you avoid the fake out, you stall out another turn of rain. And then again, you give yourself the opportunity to go for that critical thunderclap in this next turn. Rillaboom cannot take on the Calyrex Shadow Rider and the other Pokemon Eduardo has mm -hmm. all at once. Yeah, Rillaboom's best option to deal with that Calyrex Shadow Rider quickly would be Woodhammer, which would just take so much recoil right back. And Henry has been whittled down, as you mentioned. Also, the rain has yep. just faded, so Kyogre has lost the power on top of that Hydro Pump, which, of course, has to hit in the first place to deal the damage. And honestly, I don't know if this Calyrex is, is all that worried about it. I don't think it is at the end of the day. Yes, Hydro Pump is a unique tech here, but Kyogre has taken too much damage for Water Spout to be a threat. And even if that Hydro Pump were to connect, Chances are the Calyrex would hold on with a little bit of health, get that Citrus Berry to bring its health back up, and then be able to attack prior to this Rillaboom. But instead, because Tailwind is still active, it will be able to take the Woodhammer quite nicely. And just and feast on the Citrus Berry. Yeah, it's feast on the Citrus Berry, and I think deal some enough damage to pick up the KO here. Yeah. Doesn't even need Astral Barrage. Just straight for Psyshock to deal physical damage over that special defense that is mm -hmm. boosted by the Assault Vest. Yeah, Rillaboom will be able to hold on with 16 hit points, but that is it. 16 hit points are not enough for on Raging Bolt with the ground type attacks or the terrestrializations as well. There's going to be the leads. It's going to be the Raging Bolt and the Rillaboom for Eduardo, while Henry is going to lead the Overquill and the Rillaboom. So this is threatening big poison type damage onto the Rillaboom, but that uh, that Raging Bolt is probably not feeling all that pressure in, the, in this case at all. It isn't, and I think that's to Eduardo's benefit here. I don't think there's necessarily anything stopping him from going for a fake out plus a calm mine to make sure those thunderclaps deal even more damage in the future. We see Overquill walk into the poison type terrestrialization here, which means whatever poison type attack it's going to use here is going to do a lot of damage. But you have to imagine the Rillaboom's Ooh. probably the target. Ooh, Henry actually going for the faster fake out there, gets Eduardo's Rillaboom to flinch, so no fake out pressure onto this Overquill with the terrestrialization, the gunk shot lands. Oh. Not a one hit KO, but that is a lot of damage to Raging Bolt. That calm mind now came with a huge cost by expending the terrestrialization and landing that gunk shot. Henry is able to deal big damage and recover most of that life orb recoil immediately as well. Now the Overquill will also be able to focus in on that Rillaboom this turn if that's the approach Henry wants. You know, I can't say that I'm as familiar with this Overquill as Henry is, and to see him, you know, go for that big attack then immediately switch it out <laughs> makes me wonder if he's trying to save it for something in the back of Eduardo's party, such as that Calyrex Shadow Rider. Yeah, it really makes it hard for that Calyrex to uh, try to terrestrialize away from any other weaknesses, but there's a U-turn coming out from Henry's own Rillaboom, bringing the Overquill back in. So just making use of that repositioning tool to dodge the Thunderclap from the enemy Raging Bolt. However, Eduardo also has a Rillaboom and also has U-turn and is also capable of repositioning. And in this case, is able to re reposition second, which means that Calyrex now is on the field. Calyrex is on the field, but Henry has the opportunity to set up Rain Dance via the Tornadus, has that prankster ability, so it will move first. And unlike going for a Bleak Wind Storm in this situation, it's not a damage dealing move. Therefore, Thunderclap cannot deal any damage to the uh, Tornadus as a result. I think that's a very easy opportunity for him to set up the rain. But I'm very curious what the positioning he's looking for here with that Overquill is, as he's just not leaving it on the field at all. He's not leaving it on the field and he is dodging all of these thunderclaps because of it. Another Astral Barrage comes through and deals some damage to the Tornadus and the Rillaboom, but Tornadus is just going to go on the offensive. Hits a Bleak Wind Storm into Raging Bolt. Gets the speed drop on Raging Bolt, but no speed drop on Calyrex. I have to imagine this Overquill, the Dark Poison type, does have access to Crunch. So maybe trying to bait out the defensive Terra from the Calyrex and then you don't want to yeah. waste your time trying to gunk shot that Pokemon if it resists it, but you also don't want to waste it going for a crunch and then faint to the Psyshock right back. For sure, but you do have to start to wonder when is too much switching for Henry as 
the more opportunities you give this Calyrex Shadow Rider to attack, the more likely we're going to see Astral Barrage pick up a KO, boost its special attack, and get that engine going for one of the most powerful restricted Pokemon in the metagame right now. All right, well, that is finally a KO for the Rillaboom on the Raging Bolt, but it is a trade for the Tornadus. So Calyrex was able to pick up its first KO, which means it gets its first Grim Nay boost. Now, Tornadus was able to set up the Tailwind before it went down. So even without the rain, this Overquill is still extremely speedy, uh, but also has the option to bring in the Kyogre in the back if this, or if and when this uh, Tailwind uh, runs out of speed. But it's Smeargle, a supportive option that Eduardo has brought in. And this is a Pokemon that can do basically anything. And for Eduardo, redirection and wide guard. Redirection and wide guard, meaning that Henry has to remove the Smeargle from the field prior to Kyogre making an appearance, as there is nothing stopping the Smeargle from just going for wide guard after wide guard after wide guard, because there's really nothing else it would want to do in that situation. Well, there's the follow me to make Smeargle the center of attention, which means that this Rillaboom's wood hammer will focus it down. But of course, the Protect came out from the Overquill, so only the Focus Sash will be blown on the Smeargle while Rillaboom takes more damage from the Recoil. And another KO is picked up by this Calyrex. That's going to be enough to knock out this Rillaboom and get yet another Grimne boost on the Calyrex. So Kyogre and the Overquill now, after a ton of repositioning from Henry, have found, I think, the situation they were both hoping for. There is no priority on the field. Mm -hmm. There is Tailwind up. Mm -hmm. And soon the rain will be set thanks to Kyogre's own drizzle ability. And <laughs> we're going to take a moment to get some moody boosts. Thankfully, Evasion's no longer on the table, so we don't have to go down that rabbit hole mm -hmm. for once. Uh, but I do think that Henry was trying to find this position in mm -hmm. this game, as this is the only one that makes sense for this Overquill. Yeah. Unfortunately, knowing that the Smeargle has Wide Guard, I think this Kyogre is forced to click Hydro Pump to try and pick up that KO there. Eduardo can then try and anticipate that. I love the Protect here because I don't think you make a guess in this situation in top eight. Mm. You wait to see what your opponent is going to do. And if you have a double protect, spiky shield as well on that Smeargle, this is the opportunity for that. Interesting that Eduardo goes for the double protect here. So Smeargle and Calyrex are both going to be protected from any damage. Uh, could have used this as an opportunity to sacrifice the Smeargle and maybe uh, rotate in that Rillaboom. Uh, and get fake out pressure back on and grassy glide pressure back onto the Kyogre. But instead, just gonna keep to the Smeargle around for one more turn, meaning that that Smeargle, if it goes for Follow Me, will have to be targeted before this Hydro Pump can connect, if it can connect. If it can connect. I mean, it's all riding on this Hydro Pump from Henry, and if and that's something Eduardo's worried about, I think you could also consider switching out your Calyrex Shadow Rider here for the Assault Vest Rillaboom, as it will resist that damage. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give up those special attack boosts, especially in such a critical match, such as your top eight match at an international mm -hmm. championship. But Rillaboom would be so well situated here against the Kyogre. As long as the Overquill is on the field, that's not as uh, safe as an option, let's say, as the Smeargle won't necessarily be dealing damage to that Pokemon, but if you can maybe find the opportunity for a score or something, that's sort of how you can piece this end game together. Well, this is the Rillaboom switching, Rillaboom switching back in, and I had forgotten how much damage it took earlier from that U-turn. Sitting at less than half health means that it's still gonna take a lot of damage from any attack coming out from Henry's Pokemon. The second spiky shield will fail, and the crunch will pick up the KO onto that Smeargle, so the Smeargle is now down. Overquill takes Life Orb recoil as the Hydro Pump does connect onto Rillaboom, but with that Assault Vest, even in the rain, this Kyogre is not able to knock that Pokemon out. With the Tailwind expiring this turn as well, now Kyogre is going to struggle to outspeed the opposing Calyrex Shadow Rider. If Eduardo feels confident, you can now find an opening here. You fake out the Overquill, you maybe terastalize that Calyrex to try and... Actually, you don't need to terastalize the Calyrex yet. Um, and you just go straight for that Astral Barrage and you hope to deal enough damage to the Kyogre so that the Water Spouts are no longer the number one threat here. Um, yeah. Henry could 
go for the double protect to try and get around that end game, but you're still going to have to worry about then a grassy glide onto the Kyogre as well. I think what Eduardo has done is put Henry in a position Ooh. where he has to consistently click Hydro Pump, and unfortunately, oh. that's not the most accurate move. Oh, there was no terrestrialization and no protect from the Calyrex. Henry had an opportunity to go for the crunch onto the Calyrex. But Eduardo, not afraid at all. The horse, the Calyrex, will get the Astral Barrage and pick up the double KO as Eduardo Cunha, the 2022 world champion, is now a semi-finalist here at the North American International Championships. A very safe endgame played by Eduardo there. Taking